Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, I'm going to be teaching you four more spooky melodies. So what do I mean by four more? Well, last year, I released the first set of four spooky melodies. If you missed them, you can click that link right there to check it out. I'll also link it in the description box below. Now, I've got to say that I had so much fun writing those first four melodies that I wanted to do it again this year. And I also wanted to accomplish a small little goal, which was that if you had learned last year's melodies, you could play them before this year's melodies, meaning you could play those first four and then seamlessly transition into these new ones, these four that I'm gonna be teaching you guys today. And I was able to accomplish that. We're gonna talk a little bit about how the theory works uh, once we jump into the lesson, but it's really, really cool. So in total, you guys can play up to eight melodies back to 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 back. I think that's it, who knows? I'm music teacher, not math teacher. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about who this lesson's gonna be best suited for. And that's gonna be the seasoned beginner to the seasoned intermediate player. Now, some of these melodies are a little bit easier than others, some are a little bit more challenging, but if you fall between those uh, two levels, then I think this is gonna be a good challenge for you. So let's talk a little bit about the lesson. So in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys the first two melodies, but if you want to learn the last two melodies, I'll be teaching that in the part two lesson. So you can check that out by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for four more spooky melodies. Now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off to follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you need, just makes learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning these tunes. There's a couple things we wanna to touch on real quick though. The first one is that they are written for low G ukulele. So grab the low G to follow along with. And the second thing I wanna to touch on is our right hand approach for finger picking. And we're gonna talk about it at the start of each melody. Now we're gonna kick off with the first melody, which I'm calling the unknown. But if you wanna go ahead and jump straight to the second melody, which I'm calling the Pharaoh's Tomb, you can do so by jumping to this timestamp right here. But let's talk about the first melody, the unknown. So I wrote these cute little blurbs for all of these tunes. And here's what I wrote for the first one. Our medley begins with an air of mystery as we finger pick between two haunting chords. So our first melody has just two chords, an F minor to a C major. And if you had learned the four melodies from last year, then you can recall that the very last one ends on this exact same F minor chord. So you already know how to play this. But if not, let's go ahead and break it down. So we're gonna take our index finger put it on to the fourth fret of string two, and then take our pinky finger, put it on the eighth fret of string one. Now this is a bit of a stretch, okay? So if you're new to doing stretch chords, stretch licks, stretch phrases, anything that requires our index to pinky to do a bit of a <laughs> reach, then I want you guys to just hit pause, check out this lesson. It's got three exercises that you can uh, go through and they're gonna help increase the reach of your left hand. Now, it's not gonna happen overnight, so you need to incorporate these as part of your warm-up routine, but in a few months, you'll start to notice that things become a little bit easier and your reach becomes much, much greater. Now, two things we wanna to touch on, what we're doing for our right hand finger picking approach, plus the time signature. So I've already put up the uh, tab right here, First thing you can notice is that we're playing out a three, four. So keep that in mind. This first melody is in three, four. Second thing, our right hand approach for finger picking. I think this song is going to be really easy to use a three finger approach. So that means that our thumb would get string four 
and string three, index would get string two, middle would get string one. You can use a four finger approach if you want. Um, I just think most of us are probably gonna gravitate towards the three finger approach. So let's go ahead and go back to making that F minor. So we've got four on string two, pinky goes eight on string one. So we're going to go ahead and just pick out of this chord for the first bar. Sounds like this. So two things come to mind. First thing is that it's all eighth notes. Second thing, we want it to have a nice sustain. So keep the finger pressure held down so that every note rings into the next. Okay, so here's our pattern that we're playing. Three, two, one, two, three, one. So get that memorized. Three, two, one, two, three, one. And let's see if we can keep it nice and steady. We'll try together. One and two and three and. So there's a few times on a loop. Always good to practice these phrases or these bars on a loop. It's just a good way to get the muscle memory down for our right hand. So it starts out pretty simple other than the bit of a stretch chord. But here's the beauty. As we go into measure two, we're going to a C chord. All we have to do is take these two fingers and move them down a half step. So go to three and seven. So that's all we have to do. So you may want to just hit pause and practice bouncing up and down from F minor to C, just like that. We can even add it in a time frame, kind of like pluck string one and two. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Kind of like that, just to get the muscle memory down for our left hand. But again, just three and seven, we move down a half step. And this one starts with a double stop, which is fancy terminology that means we're going to pluck two notes at the same time. So go ahead and pluck one and two, and then we're gonna hit string two again, then open C, then lift the pinky up, put the middle finger down on the fourth fret of string one. And here's where we finally get to something a little bit more challenging. Now, I'm gonna give you an option on how to simplify it, so let's learn that first. So I put a red box around the first hit, which is just the third fret of string one. If you wanna make this part easier, you can play that as an eighth note. So literally just three on string one. And then after that, you go to six on string two with the pinky. So let's try that. Let's pretend it's just an eighth note right now, which makes this measure sound like Nice and steady, one and two and three and just nice and steady eighth notes. Now, if we want to make it a little bit more challenging and play it as notated, we can add this hammer on pull off, which sounds super cool. It's gonna sound like this. So you can hear and see that we're fitting three notes into the span of an eighth note. So we're playing what's called a 16th note triplet. So it's a lot of notes crammed into a short time frame, but it sounds so, so cool. There we go. So here's what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and play three on string one, hammer on with my middle finger to four, and then pull off to three. But it's gotta be quick. So very quick. So just hit pause on this video, practice. Getting that down nice and fast. And when you feel comfortable with that, add that last note, six on string two. And you can do a loop like that, just between those two. And you wanna keep it nice and steady because remember they're eighth notes. They both have that span of an eighth note. So if I was to call it out, three and three and three and three and, right? So that's technically what we're playing on if we call out the beat. But let's try this. Let's see if we can put it uh, together, just this entire second bar. And it sounds like this. So 
So there's a couple times through. So let's do this. I'll play it once, then I'll count it in, and you come in with me. One, two, three. Now, if that's a little bit too fast, you can always use this uh, cog in the YouTube player to slow it down. But let's do this now. Let's go ahead and backtrack. Let's try and measure one into two, and let's do the same approach. I'm gonna play it one time through, then I'll count us in. So it sounds like this. One, two, go. Nice. Now, as we go into measure three and four, take a look at what's happening. If you look at measure three by itself, you can see it's identical to measure one. So we already know exactly how to play that. Let's go ahead and look at measure four. If we look at the first half, which is the first three hits, you can notice that that's identical to the first three hits of measure two. So back to that C. So this means that we only have to learn the second half of measure four. So what we're gonna do for the second half is we're gonna take this exact same shape, the first and the pinky finger, and move it up to the six and the 10th fret. So I've got six on string two, 10 on string one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pluck both of those notes together, then take my pinky, move it up a half step to 11, play that note and back to 10 and play it again. So I've got double stop, then 11, 10. Rhythmically, it's easier than what we did for the ending of measure two, just eighth notes. So we have and three and, okay? So let's see if we can try four all the way through. I'll play it once, count us in, sounds like this. One, two, three. Now, let's do this. Let's play three into four. Remember, three is the same as one. So it sounds like this together. One, two, three. Nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and backtrack. I'm gonna play one through four so we can hear everything so far. So we've only got two measures left to learn, but let's talk about what happens right here. So we've played one through four, and at this point, you're going to backtrack because we've got a little repeat sign, and we're gonna go back to measure one. So we're gonna play measure one and two again, and then we're gonna go into ending number two. And ending number two is bar five and six. So here's what these last couple bars sound like, and the big thing here is that we wanna put a little bit of a retardando because this is ending our first melody. So it sounds like this. So we don't want to play this one in time. We don't want to go ba da 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 <laughs> Sounds very robotic if we do that. So we want to add that retardando. So this one's going to start with a pull-off. So we're going to take our middle finger and index finger. We're going to put the middle on four, index on three, string one. We're gonna do a pull off, then take the pinky, go back to six on string two, we've done that before, and then middle finger, four on string two. So we've got pull off, six, four. Then we're gonna start doing double stop, walk down. So our double stop, walk down is going to start where we left off. We've got four and three. So we're gonna pluck that, then move the index finger down to the first fret and the middle finger down a half step to the third fret. So you may want to practice that transition. Four, three goes to three, one. So just get comfortable with that transition. The next transition takes us up a string. So we're gonna to go to the third and second string. We're gonna use middle and index again. So fifth fret, fourth fret. So pluck that, then go down a half step. 
so four, three, and then go back up a half step, five, four, but this time around, add your thumb to grab the fifth fret of string four. Now, if that's a little bit too hard, you can omit the thumb and you can plug just three and two and make it a little bit easier. You can also try different fingerings uh, if you want to do kind of a more traditional. I just find it a little bit tricky if you're using two and one to switch super duper fast to two, three, one. So again, I think if you want to make it really easy, just play the double stop. If you want to go for gold and be Olympic, use the thumb to reach around. Now, it literally is a reach around because you've got to hug the neck. So if you're gonna use the thumb, which is a very Jimi Hendrix thing, it's a very popular guitar thing to do, you wanna reach around, hug the neck. So literally, there's no space. I can't stick a finger uh, through there. There's no opening, no hole. I'm literally hugging the neck to be able to grab that top string, okay? So backtrack, let's just talk about the double stop walk down. So we started on four, three, string two and one, went to three, one, then we moved up a string, five, four, down a half step, four, three, back up a half step, five, four. So you, you can do it like that to make it easy. If you wanna go for gold, use the thumb to reach around and grab the top. Now, remember, we wanna start the retardando pretty much on this uh, double stop. So we never are going to play this in time. We want it to have a nice slow down. So it should sound like this. Let me go ahead and play measure one, two, into five and six. So we can kind of get a context of how the slow down sounds. So just a nice gradual slowdown. So let's see if we can try that together, you and I. And we'll start with uh, bar five into six. So here we go. Ba da ba da 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 ba ba ba. It's a good speed. Here we go. Ready, go. So for that last hit, I'm just going to strum down with my thumb. I think it sounds kind of cool. Now, everything put together, let's take a listen at this entire melody. So this gives us eight bars total, but remember some of them repeated. So we only had to learn, well, we only had to learn one, two, three, four, five. Five out of eight, eight ain't bad, right? Let's take a listen. All right, so as we go into our second song, which I'm calling The Pharaoh's Tomb, this song invokes an Eastern sound because its melody lines derive from two scales, the Gypsy Major and the Phrygian scale, both of which have a very Eastern sound. So I thought the name The Pharaoh's Tomb to be quite appropriate for it. Now, as far as a right-hand approach for picking, we can continue with that three-finger approach. I think that's probably the uh, best way if you want to do traditional finger picking. But what I like to do is piccato picking, which is fancy terminology that just means alternate picking. So for example, if we take the open A and we start with the middle finger and then follow with the index. So you can see that it's a way more efficient way to finger pick a burst of melody notes on one string than to go with one finger. I have to work twice as hard when I can do that so much easier, okay? 
So if you're new to picado picking technique and you want a bit more of a crash course on the mechanics behind doing it, check out our lesson called La Hetanita. I'll put a link in the description box below. It's a flamenco tune that's really cool, really fun to play. It's even got uh, rascado technique, which is a four finger barrel roll. It covers that technique as well. So if you want to learn that, that song teaches you both. Now, I'm going to be doing a bit of a hybrid. So most of the time I'm going to be doing piccato picking. But sometimes I'm going to use my thumb to play a melody note here and there. Because if we put up the first uh, line of tap, you can see that we have the first note on the C string and then the rest of the notes on the E string. So it just feels a little bit easier on my right hand to go thumb and then piccato. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a hybrid that I'm gonna be using. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is the time signature. We're in four, four for this tune. So the first tune we were in three, four, we're switching to four, four, really important uh, to point that out. Now let's go ahead and jump into learning it. So the first thing we can notice is that we have all eighth notes, so we're going to keep the timing nice and steady. So I'm going to go ahead and suggest guys to give the piccato picking a shot. It's going to make this really easy uh, to play, especially if you want to boost the tempo. So start out with plucking the open C with the thumb, and then play the open E with the middle, and then start alternating between middle index, middle index from here. So we have open C, open E, and then take the index, put it on the first fret, play that note, then the third fret, play that note. And here we have a tiny little three, which is a slide. It's gonna be called a grace note. So on this beat, which is beat three, we're gonna do a quick grace note slide up to the fourth fret. So timing wise, one and two and three. So you wanna pluck and slide directly on B3. So it just gives it a little bit more flourish instead of going, right, playing it as a regular note. If you add that slide, it just makes it sound that much cooler. So we're gonna slide up three to four with that ring finger, go back with the ring to three, then to the first fret with the index, and then open E. So we're literally walking up and down. Try with me. One more. So this one is a great one to put on a loop to get down. Now, if you look at measure eight, you can see it starts out the same. So once you get to that slide, uh, that's where it starts to change a little bit. So the last few notes, it's going to be 3-4-3 three, three on the A string. So just use the index, middle index. So a little tricky transition going down a string, but not too hard. Let's loop that. Now, let's try seven into eight, and we can loop it again. Nice. Now, seven and eight, they're gonna get played two times. So you're gonna play that for four bars total. Then you're gonna go into measure nine and 10. And you can see that our rhythm changes here. We're going into 16th notes. So we're literally doubling the speed. And this is a sequence. So it's gonna be an eight note pattern. That's another way to think of a sequence. So if you take just the first eight notes for measure nine, it sounds like this. Then the next eight notes, 
then the next eight notes, bar 10, then the last eight. Now let me play those without so much talking in between. So you can hear it's just a sequence, it's a pattern. Da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba 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 da da do ba 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 da do do. Right? That's all we're doing, but it sounds really cool when you have it flowing one to the next. So my suggestion is to work on the eight note phrase, get that down before learning the next eight note. So don't try to play these two bars in their entirety at the get go. Break it down into little sections, it's going to make it easier to learn. Okay, so the first set of eight, we are, well, the first thing we should actually talk about is we're playing in a box. Our box is fret three to six. So you can see that I have assigned a finger per fret. So anything that falls on the third fret across all four strings will be my index. Anything on the fourth will be my middle. Fifth would be my ring, pinky gets six. So that's gonna make this really efficient when you're playing, especially if you're playing fast. So we don't want to go something like that, right? We don't wanna jump around with our left hand. We want to play efficiently. So stay in the box. A lot of folks uh, also refer to it as playing in a position, position three, meaning that we start on the third fret. So either terminology is correct but I pre tend to prefer calling it a box. So starting with the sixth fret, string one, we're gonna go six, four, three, and then six on string two. So if you watch my right hand, you can see I'm piccato those first three, then I can use my thumb to grab six on two. Okay? And then the next set of four goes four, three on string one, then six, four on string two. So that gives you the first sequence, the first pattern. That's what you want to practice. Memorize and get down before doing any more. So six, four, three, six, four, three, six, four. So hit pause on this video, just practice that. And you want to keep the timing nice and steady. One E and a, two E and a. So all 16th notes. Let's look at the next phrase. So it's going to start on the third fret of string one. And actually, watch my index finger. You can see that it doesn't move at all the entire first phrase. It stays anchored there. Okay? So after you play this note, that's when we're going to uh, move it in just a little bit. So keep that in mind. One super easy tip for making this easier. So we start on the three on string one, then we go back to six, four on string two, and here's where we move it up. Just move it directly up, three on string two. Back to six, back to four, back to three, and then five on string three. So you've got a run of notes on string two this time around. So again, drop down, let's start on three on one, six on string two, to four, to three, six, four, three, five on three. So this is the next pattern that you want to memorize. Okay, so hit pause, just practice that, get that down. All right, so let's do this. Assuming that you've got the first two patterns down, let's see if we can play them back to back. So it sounds like this. So let's see if we can try that together. We have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now I know that's fast, but again, you can use that YouTube cog to slow it down to whatever speed you need. All right, so let's jump into our 10th measure. We're gonna start on four on string two, then go to three, and then five on string three, and then three on string three. Now at this point, you're gonna do a partial bar. So lay that index finger flat on the third fret, strings three and two. And we're going to play string two, five on string three, lift up, 
three on string three, and then six on string four. So this partial bar is really important for playing this section nice and smooth. So we don't want to hear kind of like any kind of uh, stutter between notes. We want to hear fluidity between notes. And if we do a partial bar for these four notes, it gives us that fluidity. So if we backtrack, we have four, three, five, three, partial bar, three, five, three, six. So you want to hit pause. This is probably the trickiest part of the sequence. Okay, let's look at the next set. So it's going to start on five on string three, then three on string three, then six on string four, the five on string four. So you've got five, three, six, five, and then three on string three one more time, six, five, three on string four. So ending wise, five, three, six, five, three, six, five, three. Okay. So the hard thing here is again, the first part. the last eight notes or the last sequence being a little bit easier. So let's do this. If you've got that down, let's try 10 all the way through. So we have ba da 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 three and a four e and a. Nice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play nine through 10 all the way through so we can hear it together. Now, one thing you can do as you're playing this is you can add an accent note to the first note for each set of four. So. You can hear I'm just popping the first note a little bit louder. That's a really cool effect. So you can experiment with that. If you want to do it less, you can pop the first of each eight notes. So that would sound like. So same effect, but a little more subtle. So experiment with those two things just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. Now, Let's go ahead and jump into the uh, next part for this melody, and it's gonna be bar 11 and 12. Now here's the cool thing. If you look at 11 by itself, you're gonna notice that it's identical to the first bar for this melody, which was bar seven. And then if you look at 12, you're gonna notice that it's identical again to the second bar, or measure eight. Except for one thing. Look at the very last note for each of these bars. We are adding a slight variation. We're going to do a triplet again at the very end. So you have two options. If you want to make it easy, you can play bar seven and eight again to a T. Right there's seven. There's eight. But if you want to add a little variation, you can add that extra flourish at the end. And it sounds super cool. So here's what's happening. If we look at just the tail end of measure 11, we have open, hammer on to one, pull off to open. So just a quick hammer on pull off. And then look at the tail end of measure 12, same thing, but it's gonna be with the index and middle, three to four on string one. Okay, so let's see if we can add that into the mix. We'll try 11 through 12. Pretty cool, right? So a nice, simple little variation thrown in. Now you're gonna do 11 to 12, and then you're gonna backtrack, do 11 again, and then jump into ending number two, which is 
measure 13. And it's going to sound like this. Okay, so let's break that down. So we're going to start with the open C. It's going to buy us time to do this slide. Two ways we can do this slide. We can do a big slide, for example, 7 to 11 with our ring finger, or we can do a short slide, 10 to 11. So whatever feels most comfortable or whatever sounds coolest to you. But we're going to slide into 11, then go ahead and walk down on string 1 to 10 with the middle, and then 8. So we can use our index or our middle for that walk down. So you can use middle like that, or index. I'm going to go ahead and use middle, because if we look at the next notes that we got to play, we've got that hammer on pull off again, sev 8. So if I use middle, my index is in position to go ahead and do the quick hammer on pull off, sev 8. The next notes are going to be all on string 2. So use the ring to go 9 to 8, and then index can play 7. And that's where we're going to add a bit of a hold. So you can see that little symbol above it. That's called a fermata. So we're going to hold 7 for as long as we want. Now, take note too, we've got a little retardando written above the 9 on string 2. So we want to start that gradual slowdown on that chromatic 9, 8, 7, walk down. Okay, let's see if we can try that together. We have bum ba da da ba da 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 one, two, red, go. Nice. Now, we're formatting that because this next uh, line of tab we've got right here, this is going to be our ending in our transition to the next melody. And you can see that I've written free time, so there is no right or wrong on how you want to play these sets of chords. So if you want something drawn out like that, that sounds really cool. Maybe you want to go a little bit faster in the beginning and then start to slow down at the end. Kind of like that. That sounds really cool. So put the creative hat on and take it and make it your own. But let's learn these chords. The first one we all know, just a C chord, but I'm going to grab the bottom three strings, so three, two, and one. And I'm going to pluck all of these hits except for the very last chord, which is the A minor. So I'm going to pluck the C. Then we've got the same as a G chord, just move down a half step. Comes an F sharp. And after that, we're going to play two and one open. Then take the third and the middle finger. So you've got the E minor shape without the index, but go ahead and pluck three and two. And then switch it to an A minor. I'm going to use my thumb to grab this A minor, but you can do the traditional way with the middle or the index. Up to you. But the chord shapes here that we're playing, they're not super hard. They're all chords we've done before. So again, what you want to work on is just the timing and the feel of playing the section. So you know, play around with it if you want to go slow, if you want to go fast. There's no right or wrong. Just take it and make it your own. But the big takeaway, though, is that it's got a really cool haunting sound to end our second melody. Now, let's do this. Let's take a listen to the Pharaoh's Tomb all the way through, and then we'll come up, or we'll come back, and we'll wrap up this lesson. So we've learned the first 
two melodies for four more spooky melodies. Now there's two left to learn, and we're going to be learning them in the part two lesson. So if you want to watch the part two lesson to learn the rest of this, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com, doing a search for four more spooky melodies. Now, also on that page were the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab player. So you can literally hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down, just makes learning this song so much easier, especially when you've got tricky runs like that sequence we tackled in the second melody. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning the first two melodies with me. I hope you join me in the part two lesson for the next two. And until then, take care and have a happy Halloween.